What's up guys, of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with George Rule, of course, the Scarander. And today we're going up against Greninja Gaiden, and then probably you guys have already seen my preview about his team here, of course. If you haven't, make sure to check it out, I do make a pre-planning there, and uh, I was mostly right with this battle, sadly not right enough. I didn't see Verizion of Dublay coming in here, I did expect Raikou, he's not having that, that's actually kinda good. And I don't see, of course, the Scissor, which I thought would be banded if you decided to go with it. But we still have issues with Dewblade, like I said before in that uh, session, that the worst part about Dewblade is his immunities, and Stoutland is gonna have a rough time trying to really find a footing against that. But uh, yeah, besides that, I'm bringing Thunder, Scolipede, Mega Garchomp, Chansey, Hippowdon, and Stoutland. I'm just gonna start with Thunders, going for Volt Switches, basically. And I knew that Brision is gonna be very very tough for me to deal with because I don't have any previous calcs going into this game. I basically know that um, actually I don't know nothing. I am really scared about Brision and I'm scared about Stormy too because it is tough to deal with. It has natural cure. There is a lot of things that could could go wrong with that, and that's something I don't really like. But uh, yeah, I mean I hope he starts off with something that doesn't like Volt Switch and uh, I'm gonna focus on that situation while that is going on. That is really all I plan going into this game. So with all this in mind guys I guess, let's go. So um, like I said, as Thunderous is really really good here no matter what's gonna happen. He's actually gonna start with Gyarados and you know that's great <laughs> of course. And there is nothing here really forcing me to do anything besides attacking him. But I can't be locked in because he still has Version, and he's gonna actually gonna bring that one in, and that's that's very rough. Um, I can't do anything here against the Version, at least not head on. Thunderous can deal with it, but uh, I'm not gonna let it try to do it because I could lose <laughs> Thunderous in the process. So I gotta go to Betamax, which is a Scolipede, and uh, this Scolipede is of course a sweeper-based Scolipede. That is. Uh, Basically, it's supposed to deal with Star Me and Hydra when it comes to that position. I'm just gonna go for Protect, Scouting the moves, and he's gonna go for Swole Stance. And that's bad, that is so bad. Because that means one thing, uh, he's most likely, of course, uh, he's gonna pack the Stone Edge, like I have no doubt. And I also know that a Stone Edge now will most likely kill me. While I know I outspeed now, I probably did it previous turn too. I gotta decide to go for Bat and Pass and gonna go to Garchomp because it takes around 40. Uh, HP from uh, Sword Stance, uh, <laughs> Sword Stance, uh, Verisian Stone Edge, but he actually misses it, and that is super important uh, because his Leaf Blade will hurt like a lot. I decided he had to go for Dragon Claw instead of Outrage because I was thinking that I can't really be locked this early, I need God Chump throughout this game. So Dragon Claw will hurt. Uh, but like I said, don't have previous calcs, and I needed something stronger than that. And this leaf blade, of course, will do over half. It's it's awful. <laughs> and I was in no position of over predict as of right now. I could predict him go for dual blade, but I also knew that he probably would have safe switching, and he probably didn't want to risk the Rishion uh, like switching out on that because of the well sheer amount of strength that Gotcha pass. But he's gonna switch out. And of course, that's fine. Uh, that's a crit to the blade, which means that it is not offensive. Which also means that I should probably fear this guy anyway. Um, don't expect it to do a whole lot of damage to me, but I don't expect it to kill it easily. And it's gonna go for a sword stance, and I, I'm not scared. Like, I, I really, I am not. Uh, even if it goes to an iron head, I should be able to take this really well. So I go for EQ, and it definitely does a lot of damage. Not as much as I was hoping for. But then again, I didn't really expect a defensive Dewblade blade into this match. So anyway, I do take that fairly well. Now, Falter, he will probably likely switch out. I should probably go for rocks. And he's gonna go for Intimidate. Of course, he's gonna do anything to me. And uh, as of this position, I knew I could take a waterfall. I would be down for by the count, but I was forced to go for a roar in case of, because I can't switch out on this. In case I go for Dragon Dance. I am in trouble, like there is not a whole lot I can do from that position and I think my opponent knew that and he actually decided to go for an Ice Fang and I think he was predicting something else but I am not really that weak to Ice but now I know his full moveset at least or he probably doesn't have Crunch 
is basically what I was going for. So just going to go for that roar, and like you see guys, I do take this really well. But this roar might actually stir some things up, because I release this starfish, this marvelous gemmed freak. And let's just say that it is. This was not what I was expecting, nor what I wanted. I was really hoping for Dewblade or Arcanine. I thought I could deal with those. I cannot deal with this. I just, I can't. And he's gonna scold me. And of course, because I have a chance, I don't fear this guy whatsoever. And, um, you know, a side shock does around 30%. So I was thinking that I'm just gonna scout him and go for a wish. And I actually went for recover. And that's important to notice because that means that this actually must have some bulk into it. And I knew that most Starmies, or most likely, all Starmies has a uh, natural cure. It's not like you're gonna use analytics anyway, so Thunder Wave was the way to go anyway, because that meant that he was slowed down. And if he slows down, like I said, uh, I went for Thunder Wave, I thought I went for Wish first, but I went for Thunder Wave first, because I know I could soft boil afterwards and be able to outspeed. So he's gonna keep going for Scalds. He's a bit unlikely not to score the burn. I mean, the burn is really probably more. Uh, dangerous in damage output than, uh, let's say, the um, potential Scald. So anyway, he has, like I said, Recover and uh, Scald, and he's actually going to show me the Ice Beam for one out here, which means I can't bring, or actually I shouldn't have either done that, bringing God Chump here. Uh, I couldn't risk that, and he probably predicted after that wish that I was going to go for uh, a switch out, but I didn't, I couldn't, I wouldn't, I just thought it was too scary, and um, as you guys, as I said before this uh, match, I actually wish recovers not the half HP of the Pokemon you switch into, but the half HP of the Pokemon uses the wish. That means that uh, my wishes actually give around 108 HP, which means pretty much full of recover to anything that switches into it. So I decided to keep going for Seismic Tosses. I knew that there is a possibility that um, my opponent could switch into Dew Blade, and that would have been, of course, unfortunate, but luckily for me, with the Stealth Rocks, I am able to take out this Verisian. And my opponent can now freely bring the Dewblade. And a Sacred Sword is in the area of taking me out. I knew that. So I decided to go for a Thunder Wave. And I'm basically gonna try to. Um, oh, 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 I did not do that. Oh, right, sorry. Uh, not yet. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go to Bugra. Basically, I did expect the Sacred Sword. And um, I was thinking that you should probably do around 40 HP, which forced him to go for a Shadow Snake, which means I can slack off freely. But he scores a crit. So I was basically like hoping that the Shadow Sneak wasn't doing enough here. I am full defensive, and then after he showcased it wasn't fully offensive, I do barely live the combo of that crit. And that is, well, that's too bad for my opponent. Because my opponent actually had a good chance there of uh, taking me out. But a natural outspeed, which means that he's forced to go for Shadow Sneak. And there is no reason for him to set up because of his circumstance. Now, he goes for Protector Sword yet again, and as of this time, I actually decided to hit him. And he sees right through me and goes to his Hydreigon, and of course that freaking beast is immune. And, um, well, there is obviously nothing we can do here. Uh, he is levitating after all, and I decided not to go for, uh, um, what do you call it? I just wanted to scout whether it was Specs or not. But he's actually Life Orb too, like the Star Me. So if Nick, if you're watching this, remember that there is item clause. You can't have two duplicate items on the field. I just have that said. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I decided to go for slack off, and um, I did that because I just wanted to scout whether or not it was Specs or Scarfed, and that is definitely life for them. Uh, had it been Specs, it would have been close to killing me. Had I gone for Draco, that would have killed me. So anyway, it's going to go for Dark Pulse, and as of right now, I felt really comfortable switching in my Chansey, and for you guys who doesn't know, I hate Chansey. I think it's very, very cheap to use, and I think... Yeah, I think a lot about it, that's why I don't like using it. This is actually the first time, seven battles in, that I actually decided to use it. So anyway, I'm gonna go for the T-Wave. I did expect him to switch out, not risking the T-Wave. And the Dewblade is gonna get the short out there. And um, I am still in the area where I actually can take a Sacred Sword. So I decided to go for a Wish. I'm not gonna bank on him being fully paralyzed whatsoever, but I was thinking that when I get hit, I could just go for a Soft Boil and not stall him out, but wait, basically wait for him to be fully paralyzed. Luckily for me, he is fully paralyzed the first turn. And unluckily for me, my sense works out. <laughs> and I'm basically gonna switch out here. Like I said, since he was now more defensive and not fully offensive, I knew that Garchomp could take this hit. And I say that now, but you know, it, it's pretty close of killing me. Like, it was a 
it was a gamble, obviously, and it did pay off, and now my Asexus is back. He is back on track, like he fought Maurice Jans, that was tough, this Dublin threatened him out, now it's paralyzed crippled, Gotcham feels comfortable staying in and finish off these blades with his own blades. So yeah, and of course the dodge, he gotta come here, and you know what, fuck it. Um, I didn't really necessarily uh, thought that this guy was threatening, but I did see that it's very likely that he would pull a double on me and bring the Hydreigon, forcing me for EQ, and um, let's just face it, I'm not falling for that, and I decided to bring my scuffed um, Thunderous and basically here go for Hidden Power. Uh, I, If I remember correctly, I have, uh, I think it was, I think it's Hidden Power flying. I have a few of these, but Hidden Power Fly was the one I decided to go with in case of Verision, but that was my only response to Verision. So anyway, he's gonna go to dodge it again. I thought it was strange because I thought he would actually bring the Gyarados and try to set up. Obviously, I can't kill from this range, so I decided here to go for Hip Power Dawn. And basically, I'm predicting that uh, he could go for Flare Blitz, but I'm in a good range of HP. So I should be able to survive that combo. But... What I did not predict was that he is banded as fuck. This hurts so much. So goddamn much. And basically from this position I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna take another one. I could fail with the sand. I better bring Chansey. He's forced to go for another Flare Blitz to take me out. So I thought the residual damage alone will kill him. And that of course means that the Chansey will um, pretty much die by this. But I do live with a slither of health, or actually 36 is actually quite respectable. And the sand of course still up, and the sandstorm I think does 16 or something like that in damage. Which, you know, puts me in that rough position where sandstorm will take me out. And I was debating whether or not I should switch out to full and finish this off. But I decided that, you know, it's very likely to set up Dragon Dance and I felt really stressed out. So I decided to go for Thunder Wave, which is not a bad play, it really isn't. But I also lose a chance in this process. Had I gone for a softball, I would have been so screwed. <laughs> so I couldn't really risk that, so I decided to go for a T-Wave. And that shuts him down, like, there is no way this Gyarados is gonna get some last effort chance of dealing with this. And with the residual damage on this Gyarados, there is no way he's taking a superpower from the Stoutland that I knew that going in. So I'm basically gonna bring Fulf back, and we're gonna do what Fulf does best. Clean up this mess. And kill the shrimp. Yeah, I know it's not a shrimp, but damn it looks like it. Damn it looks like it. And his last Pokemon now is of course a Stormy, and even with the attack drop, I still have a life force, I'm still in neutralish um, damage. That means that this Grunge is gonna kill anyway because it's super effective. And Stormy, while has a decent defenses, doesn't really have the best HP and in combo with that it's gonna fall. So Greninja Gaiden, GG man, is a 5-0 victory in my favor. And it could have been a 6-0 had I predicted him for the Dragon Dash, but just I couldn't do that risk. I just, I was too stressed out in the situation, and I really was, I was really scared about that God or Gyarados. So luckily I do win here, but um, it, it felt like it could have gone either way from time to time. I was just better off with those damage rolls than he was. So yeah, I mean, my opponent here, I'm gonna give him all the credits he needs, because while I do win 5-0, it is not really that simple, like, yes, I had a major, major momentum going in, but think about it, I did barely live with, uh, with the power down early in the game, I could have lost that very early there, and had I done so, uh, Stoutland would have not been able to do what it did here before the game ended, and yes, I could have locked myself into T-Bolt against uh, the Gyarados and Stormy which was left, yes, but uh, Gyarados is especially defensively heavy, this very likely would have been able to take a hit, and I would not have been able to survive the retaliation of an Ice Fang. And that's something I kept in mind after this battle, that while I do win 5-0, I know how well this guy could have actually beaten me at the end. And I barely lived this, or win this one, because I was really cool there at the end. I really, I really decided to chance do the fee babe, like... That was all I had in my mind, and I'm sure that my opponent here, Nick Greener Guy, is going to do very, very well here in Lithio. And um, the only reason I win is because I had a lot of luck, and RNG was definitely my favor. And uh, it is sometimes that's the game, and it sucks to be honest, because I think this game would have been much closer if things have gone in the opposite direction. 
But anyway, I want to thank you Nick for this battle, and uh, now we actually have three wins and four losses. Ugh. But individually, I have three wins and one loss. So that actually sounds better. Um, I really need to step up my game, though. I really need to win my my upcoming battles, no matter what, because those four losses is heavy. It is. It is gonna be honest. Like there is not a lot of recovery from that, and uh, I can't risk losing more battles. So, uh, yeah, wish me luck in the future, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, take care, and of course, remember, the sky is limit. Have a good day, and take care, alright? Bye.